So welcome everybody to the Tarot for Self-Care class. Uh, I really am delighted that people are uh, here live to hang out and uh, participate in this, which is amazing. Uh, I also, you know, hope that everybody who uh, joins in the, uh, the after the fact also enjoys it tremendously. So. You know, I think that for me, when I started out reading cards, I had lots and lots of questions and I asked lots of questions of the cards all the time. Um, but really, really for me, sorry, I have to switch the screen to uh, let people in. Um, really for me, one of the things that uh, has happened over time, both with my tarot and my magic practice is I've moved towards simpler and simpler things. I've moved towards smaller and smaller things. Um, and I've moved to, uh, generally speaking in regards to myself, um, simple spreads, simple approaches, simple tools in order to really, um, I don't know, get myself into the right energy, right? And I feel like a lot of what I do, I sort of came up with the phrase identity magic. I'm often working with myself to shift myself out of where I am and into another place, right? And whether that's um, around stuff, you know, magically towards prosperity or peace or abundance or those kinds of things, um, or whether it is through the kind of stuff we're gonna be talking about today, constantly sort of exploring where am I and where do I want to be or need to be in order to do something different than, than what's going on, right? And you know, for today is a great example. I woke up and, uh, I was super cranky. I was super, super cranky about an exchange I had with the company. Um, and I started basically going through this process that we're talking about here to try and move myself out of that space, right? Because it doesn't, it doesn't benefit me to carry that forward. It doesn't benefit the people that I worked with today or the various projects I worked with and so on. And so I spent a lot of time trying to kind of like a lot of time. I spent some time working through that and working around that in order to get into a much more um, present state of mind that really helps with what I was doing. So, you know, for me, uh, self-care means a lot of different things, right? And I think ultimately for everybody, self-care uh, can mean so many different things that, you know, we, we can't exhaust that list, right? And, you know, it may mean like many of the things that we see on uh, social media and so on, right? Like face masks and baths and, uh, you know, candles and whatever. And that's great, right? Um, Self-care might mean uh, taking care of something more profound, right? Um, Self-care might, might mean, uh, you know, distracting yourselves. You know, for me, uh, I, all the pictures here are from various walks and hikes that I've done over the last number of months. For me, one of the biggest things that self-care means is getting out and getting into nature, getting out and getting down by the water, um, getting out and spending some time, even if I'm just quiet, the people I care for, you know, uh, my kids or a couple of the people that I do distanced uh, stuff with, you know. And I think that we, we need to be mindful that we don't need to, um, specifically have judgments or have a special list or so on, it's better for us when we're approaching this process to look for the quality that we need rather than the specific thing, right? We're not necessarily gonna look at the tarot and see a foot massage, right? We're not gonna necessarily see our favorite TV show. We're not gonna see, um, maybe the, the person that we want to talk to, but we can look at the cards and maybe we'll see those things, but also we'll see the qualities of things that we need, right? Sometimes we need distraction. My sleep has been garbage through COVID. I have been uh, waking up early. I have trouble getting to sleep. I just have trouble staying asleep. And so I I'll wake up early. And by early, I mean like five o'clock when I don't need to be up until eight o'clock. Or sometimes I'll wake up at two or three in the morning and just be awake for a few hours. And I lean a lot on 
Item number one, distraction during those times. Because if I don't do something, I just lie there and feel crummy and ruminate about the things that are challenging me and, you know, have anxiety about COVID and all sorts of stuff. And, you know, there are times where I'll try my yogic breathing to ground and I'll do some things to see if I can get back to sleep. But once I realize I can't, I just give it up and I get my book and I start reading. And I spent a lot of time reading a lot of very distracting work. You know, I have read, if you're a, a follower of that, Dresden Files, I've read all 17 books of the Dresden Files in the last year, you know, and I've read about 45 books in the last year now, and uh, the majority of them are all in that category, entertaining, uh, distracting, and so on, right? Our distraction might be TV, it might be uh, games, it might be a video game, it might be any number of things, right? Or we might need support, right? We might need some feedback, some engagement, a sympathetic ear, right? We might need something from somebody else to help us take care of ourselves, right? And certainly for me, I have uh, a few weekly standing phone calls with people that sometimes we're just like, yeah, yeah, ah, it's good, it's good. And sometimes we're both like, man, I am a hot mess today, or one of us is, and we'll just be supportive with each other. Right. And, you know, if you're looking for uh, more guidance around support, if that's a thing that you're missing in your life. Um, back when COVID began, I ran a peer counseling course and uh, all of that stuff is available. It's on a free section of my website. You can go check it out. There's a Facebook group associated with it, which has not been super active, but you could certainly jump in there and perhaps people will rekindle some momentum with that. Right. Sometimes we need to be pampered, right? We want to, you know, I've been, uh, you know, for me, pampering uh, has involved spending a lot of money on records or expanding my record collection, right? And you can tell how stressed I've been or not stressed by the amount of records waiting for curbside pickup at my favorite places, right? Or coming in the mail. But maybe we, we want a thing. Maybe we need a thing, right? Maybe we want to not cook dinner. Maybe we want to buy ourselves a treat, right? You know, when we're talking about COVID times, right? I think it makes sense to keep all these things on the table. You know, we, sometimes we need to rest, you know? And I think that the thing I need most these days, which I've not been able to get, and I'm hoping I'm gonna get next month, is, is a week off work and a week to like sit around and do nothing and be bored, to turn my phone off entirely, to not check on anything and to just look at the walls and be like, huh, Am I bored? Well, sit around some more, get more bored, right? And I read a, uh, a wonderful meme uh, at some point a while ago, which kind of floats back to me every now and then, you know, and it said, we should all find time to rest. We should rest until we make ourselves uncomfortable because we're resting so much. And then we should rest some more. And then we should cancel all our, our plans and we should rest so much that we make everybody around us uncomfortable with how much we're resting. And I aspire to a period of time of that still, right? Um, we might need some joy, right? We might need to cue up a song and dance around. You know, I, I uh, one of the things I used to change my mood this morning was uh, I've been really enjoying the latest Bahamas record and I popped it on and I, I turned the volume up to 11 and uh, you know, I just bopped around the house a bit, you know, and it's, it's frivolous, it's in the moment, it's just direct enjoyment. Um, you know, sometimes we need to maybe laugh a bit stuff, right? Or to try and laugh a bit stuff. Maybe you're a person who likes comedy, maybe you've got a funny friend, so on. And sometimes, right, and this one we need to be cautious with, but sometimes self-care looks like getting stuff done, right? Because pile of dishes or the backlog on getting our taxes ready or the whatever it is gets in the way of us you know being able to move forward right and it feeds those negative cycles or those anxiety cycles right and i say that you know we're all sort of to varying degrees encouraged and trained to be productive to be productive members of society to you know we live in this capitalist 
culture where consuming things is supposed to bring us happiness or so the marketing would tell us and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, don't get me wrong. As a store owner, I'm happy when people consume things, right? But I think that we need to also keep an eye on those things, right? Because there's a, a difference sometimes between avoidance and compounding problems and actually sort of just taking space and so on, right? So I would say when it comes to all of these things, make sure they're not your default, make sure you're not doing them all the time, right? And working what we're gonna talk about today will actually help you hopefully, um, you know, essentially shuffle through the deck of various ways of self-care to replenish more of yourself, okay? I, um, I listened to a podcast called The Moment, sometimes with this guy, Brian Koppelman, who makes uh, movies and TV shows. And I don't always dig everybody he has on there and all the conversations he has. Um, but one of the things I really dig is he and this guy, Seth Godin, um, are good friends. And Seth is on the podcast once or twice a year. Right? Um, and I actually had fallen out of listening to podcasts. And so it wasn't, it was like, December when I listened to a podcast they had done in the spring, right when things were starting to happen. And one of the things that I really enjoyed from that conversation was this idea of thick pleasure versus thin pleasure, right? Or thin pleasure versus deep pleasure, right? And for me, thin pleasure is often the third, fourth, or fifth episode of a TV show when I'm binging it, right? The first one might be quite enjoyable. But at some point in that process, I've zoned out. I'm not engaged. I'm maybe a little more numb. I'm not usually gripped, right? Especially during these times. Um, whereas a deeper pleasure and a deeper replenishment for me might be something like getting in the car or going for a long walk and making my way down to the beach or to a place where I can go and sit in nature and so on. Um, when the weather's nicer, you know, no matter how little I feel like hopping on my bicycle, I know that unless I'm physically exhausted, hopping on my bike and going out for an hour or two is deeply replenishing to myself, right? And so we need to entertain this notion of trying to choose the deepest or thickest or whatever we want to call it, pleasure available to us, right? And we want to be mindful that sometimes our resistance should be listened to, right? And sometimes our listen, our resistance should be over, overrun, right? And ultimately, that's an intuitive thing. It's a knowing yourself thing. But I think it's very important to try and understand which of these things do we want, right? So thick pleasure, thin pleasure. There's no shame in wherever we're at, right? There's never any, you know, in all of this, there's no shame, there's no guilt, there's no, none of that. It's not helpful, right? Um, and, you know, depending on our circumstances, we might only have like, you know, that moment of taking a big scoop of peanut butter, dipping it in the chocolate chips in the cupboard, sticking it in our mouth and being like, ah, oh, that's satisfying, right? Not a very deep pleasure, doesn't last very long, but in that moment it's what's available. That's fine, right? If we have the option for something deeper, better, stronger, more enduring, more lasting, well, we need to try and gear ourselves towards that as well, okay? So here's the, here's the crux of where I've come to with my uh, question, right? My daily question for myself. I used to ask all sorts of things. I used to ask nothing and I used to do many different things. And I, you know, I've played with all of it over the like 35 years I've been reading cards now, right? Um, but the question I ask myself during my regular tarot practice, which is not every day, but it's many days of the week. The question I ask myself is, how do I show up fully for today, right? What do I need to know in order to show up fully? Because really being able to engage in your life and to engage in what's in front of us is the thing that is the best act of self-care, 
right? And again, that engagement might include canceling your day and taking a long nap, right? It's not always about doing the things or checking all the boxes. It's not about endless productivity or hustle or any of those kinds of things, but it's how do you show up fully, right? And the more fully we can show up, the more of our whole self that we can bring to bear on whatever we're doing, or maybe put it another way, the more present we can be with our day in general, the better it goes, the easier we handle problems, the, the more clearly we engage with what's happening. And probably in my experience, the better shape we're in at the end of that day, even if it's a long day, even if it's a tiring day. You know, last week I worked, on one day I worked 15 hours getting the store shut, set up. And my things about showing up fully were queuing up some music that I love, grabbing a shawarma from my favorite shawarma place, taking a break to sit and talk with somebody on the phone for a little bit in the middle of the work, and, and so on and so on. There are various things that I kind of came to around that. And then going home and going to bed, taking having a big long sleep, right? And being, there's a difference between just stepping into our day, right? Because in that particular example, for me, there was all this pressure to get everything in order for reopening this week. Um, and certainly there is a deadline and there is whatever, but also I managed to do the majority of it without a sense of a deadline looming over and with a sense of persistence, right? And when I stopped to come home, it's because I hit this moment where I was like, oh, you know what? I just noticed that I picked up this thing and put it down like three times. I'm now wasting my time. Now it's time to come home. I'm no longer able to, uh, to reset to a productive place. So now I'm gonna call it for the day. And you know, this is, this is all advice that came for me about how to handle this out of my cards in approaching that day, okay? Um, I love this. I don't know who, who it is or if it's a bunch of people, but uh, somebody graffitis around town, uh, tout est possible, everything is possible, right? And, you know, I think, uh, I think it's a lovely, refreshing notion. And I certainly think that when we're able to show up fully, everything is possible or almost everything is possible anyway, right? All right. So, Essentially, what we're talking about here, we're going to be talking about when we're drawing a card to ask, how do I show up fully, right? We're going to enter a process of inquiry about the cards, which is we're going to grill that card with a lot of questions, and we're going to grill ourselves, right? And we're going to ask these questions and a variety of questions again and again and again until we get through to a sense of completion, right? And what I think is important to notice, first of all, is so start with what you feel, right? You know, start with how you feel in reaction to this card, right? Do you feel like, oh, that's so good. Wow, it's great. It's really, I'm, I'm happy for that, right? You'd be like, damn, it's another hard day. Look at that hard card that's there, right? Do you feel confused? Do you feel uncertain? Do you feel like you don't know what you're doing, right? Whatever you feel, that's the inroad, right? That's where we start, right? And if we don't like it, well, then we might start to ask ourselves, why well, I, I normally don't like that card, but what might, what might ease that card? Well, how might I relate to that card in a way that allows it to be different, right? Is there a way to hold some peace internally in relationship to this card, right? Um, does the card make me mad? Is my anger appropriate, right? Are my emotions in, in a, a, an appropriate level, right? Or in a sort of understandable re relationship to the circumstance that's going on? This morning, when I woke up and I finished having this exchange with this company that was very, that was disappointing to me, 
and I was digging into my process, I noticed that my anger was excessive for the actual issue, right? The actual issue cost me $20. Stinks, I hate wasting money, right? But it's $20, it's for me, it's not the end of the world today. In other times in my life, for other people in other circumstances, maybe that would be a bigger deal, right? And that's fair too, right? But I realized that I was getting mad about it because I was mad about 10 other things, right? And once I started noticing that I was angry and that it was out of, out of sync or seemed felt inappropriate for the level of problem, then I started digging in and looking at what else was going on, right? And we might feel intense fatigue. We might already feel fatigue when we start the process, right? And in which case we might say, okay, where can I get some energy? Where can I, what can I do from the level of fee, fatigue? How can I honor my feeling and move through some of the things that might still have to happen in my day, right? So we wanna, wanna build this practice of asking questions in order to um, start digging into uh, what's, what we're seeing in the card and looking for opportunities that speak to things we can do that will help us show up, right? And these things might be very practical. There might just be an understanding. There might be, as there often is for me, an emotional shift that comes from just doing this process that makes it a little easier, right? For hard days, there might be a set of guiding principles that you pull up and start, um, you know, gearing up or, or keeping in mind as you're going through, right? And when you're looking at your cards, and we're gonna look at some examples so we can talk about this, right? Um, when you're looking at your cards, if you're not sure to where to start, start with the beginning of the sentence. In order to show up fully today, I should what, right? And we're gonna look at the card for some of these ideas, right? Distract myself, support myself, rest, so on and so on, right? And you will end up with a great big list of things, um, probably for your own practice, okay? Does anybody have any questions about where we're at before we get into looking at some cards? You can just unmute yourself and jump in. Is everybody good? All right. So what do I need to do in order to fully show up fully today? All right. So, I mean, the first thing that I think when I see this card is I hate this card so much, right? Like, I never am happy to see the Nine of Swords, right? There's, there's nothing uh, exciting about it for me. And, uh, you know, even in the, the Tarot de Marseille where, you know, swords represent uh, conflict and war and the more swords there are, the worse it is. Well, the Nine's just about as bad as it gets, right? And so I will look at the cards and I'll notice, right? Number one, my agitation, right? Number two, what do I, what do I, what is my feeling in relationship to this? And the last time I saw this card, which was not too long ago, my feeling was one of exhaustion. I looked at the character and I thought, man, that person is not getting the sleep they need. And so I said to myself, and please keep in mind, I'm not thinking about all the things I know about this card, right? I mean, I can talk about this card for, I don't know, half an hour or an hour about it, what it means and all these things and its history and in different decks and so on. That's not what I'm doing here, right? What I'm doing here is I'm asking the card, I'm asking the artwork to speak to me and to help me cut through to what needs to happen, right? And so the first thing that I noticed when, when this card last came up for me was how exhausted I was, how tired I was. And the way in which the character is sitting there reminded me that I had been woken up many times throughout the night, sometimes by myself, sometimes by the humans who I'm responsible for tending. And that I was exhausted and unable to focus. And when I last saw this, so what's the solution for that, right? How do I 
come to terms with that. How do I show up fully when I'm exhausted and I can't focus, right? And the answer that I came up with in that moment was, I'm gonna cancel one of my things and I'm gonna go back to bed for a while. And I was lucky to be able to take a break, go back to sleep for an hour. And when I woke up, I didn't have that sense of emotional overwhelm or cognitive overwhelm that I started the day with, all right? Just the act of my kids asking me what cereal we had was too much for me first thing in that day, all right? Um, but, right, so number one, how do I show up fully, right? The answer to that question is I acknowledge the exhaustion and my lack of focus and I seek solutions that can ease that or mitigate that, right? And everybody's solutions will vary depending on the day and your circumstances and your obligations. And you have the option, and I will, as someone who has a lot of experience doing this technique, often read just the one card for all the information I need. I'll just cycle through different layers of it and so on. If that feels beyond you, right? If diagnosing feels like enough, we're going to do a second part. We're going to draw another card. We're going to talk a little further about looking for solutions. So if you're relatively new to tarot, or if you feel like you would prefer that, don't worry about pulling the extra information from here. Okay. We're going to have an opportunity for a second card. Me, I've gotten lazy over time. And for me, one card, I'm like, oh, I only need one card. Do it all with one card. So I don't have to pull out more cards. Okay. So I'm looking for the general thing, exhaustion that I feel from this card, right? And maybe the uh, overwhelmedness of it. And then I'm looking for opportunities to deal with that, right? And to acknowledge that. So um, nine of wands, right? What do I need to do in order to show up fully today? I need, right, what do we see here, right? What do we see in this nine of wands, right? I notice personally that the person has a firm grasp on the thing one, but they're kind of looking at everything else, right? And the question is, is that helpful, right? And we can see, I hope people can see, that the look on their face, to me, and you may have a different feeling, which is totally fair. And obviously, if you're looking at a different deck, even if they drew it the same imagery, you might see a different emotion in their face. And that's the power of terror, right? You and I might look at this, right? And you might say, oh, yeah, yeah, he's got the one he needs, and he's glad that he doesn't have to deal with the rest, right? Um, I might look at it and say, yeah, he's got the job in front of him, but he's aware of everything else that needs to be done still, right? This is where it's personal, right? This is why we're not leaning on meanings, but we're leaning into ourselves and into analyzing and digging into ourselves in order to see what we need to see, right? For me, right? This idea that the person is paying attention to the other wands, right? Those other eight more than the one they have in hand tells me their attention is in the wrong place, right? So my answer to this for myself when I saw it recently was you need to focus on what is in your hands, what is in front of you so that you can uh, accomplish something versus being distracted by the, all the other things that you can do. And believe me, as both a parent and a store owner and a person who does readings and tries to have a bit of a life, there's always a list of things that I'm not getting to, right? And so in this particular case, then I would pursue a line of inquiry into what do I need to do or what will help me focus on the job in front of me and not be distracted by all these other elements, all right? And again, I might dig into this or I might dig into things that I already know, right? Which is, I am a huge fan of um, a notion I picked up from David Allen, 
we wrote Getting Things Done, which is if it's on your mind, it's not in your system where you trust that you're going to remember it later. And so in a case like this, I'll often take out a notepad and make a list of all the things that I need to remember to do. And then I put it aside and then I'll do the thing that I need to do now, right? Because there's something about the brain not trusting us or part of our brain not trusting us that can create this kind of pattern, or at least for me, right? Um, yeah. Everyone still following along? Everybody good? Yeah? All right. Um, how do I show up fully today? The King of Swords, right? Number one, when I see the, the kings or the, the upper monarchs, right? I'm always reminded because of my status as a parent and, a, and as a, an employer of other people and a business person that I need to pay attention to being in charge, right? King of Swords is in charge, right? Here, it's less about what I see, right? Um, and more about what I know, which is also fair, right? Um, both can work. For me, the King of Swords is in charge. They have a focus. They're driven towards their goals and they don't do things that are unimportant to them, right? And I, when this card came up, I reminded myself, I was like, oh, Andrew, today you need to remember that you're the CEO, right? You're the CEO of your business. You're the parent. You're the person who needs to make sure that things are getting done in the way they need to get done. Right. Now, you might have a very different feeling with this, right? You might look at this character and say, you know, they're tired of fighting and they want to sit down, right? And you might say, oh, you know what? I'm not going to work so hard today. Today, I'm going to call it in and go easy, right? That you might look at it and say, you know, uh, this person has their sword out, not because they want to fight, but because they want people to know that they could fight, right? So today I'm gonna send some signals out to people that I'm not available for their drama, but also I'm gonna sit down and do it in the most like easygoing way possible, right? So we can look at the card and see a variety of different things depending on who we are in our life and our circumstances at the moment. But we're always looking for the thing that sort of speaks to the core issue, right? Here, right? fatigue, and maybe mental overwhelm, right? Here, for me, a lack of focus on the thing that needs to happen, right? Here, a reminder that I might be called, that other people and things throughout my day might encourage me to forget that I need to be in charge and I need to make sure that I stay in charge, right? Issues, is, it's an issue to do with uh, the right use of your energy and time, right? Um, so we're always looking for this idea to see what's there. And then we're going to dig either through the cards, right? Um, or through the second set of card, second card, we're going to draw to look for more specific solutions. Okay. Makes sense. And finally, my favorite, what do we get when, when you like, how do I show up fully today? And they're like, oh, death, right? Um, this is not a time, right? This process is not a time to worry about negative cards or hard cards, right? You know, if you're uh, like, you know, I started my tarot journey with the Toth Tarot, right? And, you know, the Toth Tarot especially leans into the negative aspects of some of the cards, right? Seven of, uh, you know, or eight of, eight of cups, indolence, complete stagnation right? You know, it's a card where you're just mired in the muck and you're unable to even rouse up enough will to care and try and do anything about it, right? It's so much stickier and denser than a lot of other interpretations of this card, right? Um, and so I learned that you got to roll with whatever and you got to learn how to work with those things and look for what can be done, what can be positive, right? So, what, what do we know about death, right? 
we know that there is inevitability with it, right? We will all, unfortunately, come to meet death at some point. So it could be showing up to speak about making peace with the inevitable, right? We understand that death is about release, right? And we could think about the idea of releasing things. Um, we also know that death, um, you know, one of the notions that I have about the death card is this idea of, um, you know, can be, it's like the band-aid can be quick or slow, which one's better, right? And, you know, and we can apply this to things like, well, today, maybe I need to, uh, in order to show up fully, I need to acknowledge what is, what is inevitable in my day. You know, I got to call the government and talk to them about my taxes. Well, I don't want to, but it's got to be done, right? We might talk, we might realize, huh, today, in order to show up fully, I should look at what's in the way of me showing up and see if I can end those situations. Is there a job or a project or a relationship, a habit, something that I could cut down and get rid of, right? Can I kill something in order to show up more fully? right? Is my day too, bu too busy? And I got to like, go, you know, I don't care if you do show up for to talk to me, Mr. Pope. Um, I'm unavailable, right? I need to cut down those things that want to steal my time. Again, we'll see different things depending on our feeling, our relationship to it, and so on, right? And you may have a very different set of uh, feelings, right? The death card might show up to say, you know, you think you're going to be productive today, but that loss you suffered recently, you got to just stop and grieve it, right? We'll see what we see based on our lives, okay? But we're looking for that sort of bigger notion, and then we'll start to digest it into things that we can do or can be done about it in order to facilitate that showing up more fully. So, and I think that one of the things that we need to understand or think about is this question of how do we get back to our whole selves? How do we rejuvenate ourselves? How do we uh, refill our cup, right? And there's a lot of metaphors that people use about these things. And one of the things that uh, I found was really interesting as I was listening to um, a productivity somebody or other at some point and they were talking to a marathon runner and they were talking about how their recovery run which is the run you do the day after your longest training day was the most important part of their schedule and it's really for them not much more than a glorified you know it's a little bit more than a walk but not not by much right but it allows things to move through the body so that all of that built up stuff doesn't settle in and prevent them from continuing training. And I started asking myself the question at the end of my work week, what do I need tonight? Because I had Saturday nights off where I was not obliged to have my kids or my family or anybody. What do I need tonight in order to be able to show up fully for them and for what's next and next week when I come back to work again? How do I replenish myself? How do I recover? How do I fill myself up? Right? Or in the context of what we're doing tonight, right? what do I need in order to help myself show up fully today? Right? What will replenish or flush that out for me? Okay. And when we're looking at the cards and we're gonna use for the example of teaching tonight, this idea of drawing a second card to try and look for that more, uh, more thing to do, more information about how to do or what to change, how to think about things, how to manage this. But you can, if you, if you feel like it, as I do, um, take these ideas and apply them to the first card you drew as well and look for that answer more, okay? Um, and a simple guideline is, one, say, do something. Take an action, right? Cups talk about a feeling, right? You've got a feeling that needs to be addressed in some way. Maybe it needs to be controlled. Maybe it needs to be felt. Maybe it needs to be expressed, but there are an emotion at play. Swords equals words, right? Swords are things that we need to say aloud, or talk about, or maybe journal about, right? 
anything to do with words, we can look at the swords. Coins have to do with our bodies, right? Here we find our bubble bath, our massage, uh, eating a salad, um, going for a walk, right? Whatever it is. Trumps each show the thing that they govern, and we need to kind of try and pull that idea back in, right? And the court cards, you can go either way with these. One, you can uh, interpret them along the lines of the suits as listed above, right? Or, um, as is often the case for me, I'll often look at them and think of, realize there's a person who I, who I either want to talk to or connect with, or a person who represents a quality that uh, would benefit me in this situation, right? And I was recently um, having a challenging thing with a, a small group of people that I have to deal with around stuff. And I realized that from my cards, that there was somebody that I used to talk to about how to manage things socially with these people that I should call and have a conversation with. And when I did, it felt great. They were super uplifting. It was wonderful. They gave me some really solid advice. And all of a sudden I felt different about the whole situation. So, you know, you might look at the cards and irrespective of everything, be like, oh, that's my uncle Bill. That's my friend, Steve. There's Betty. There's, you know, um, Herschel over in accounting, whatever, right? You might see something like that. And even if you can't necessarily get to that in your day, um, make note of it because our unconscious and our emotional self and all of that stuff um, will we'll often accept that, oh, I sent them an email to say, can we have a conversation about something, right? That might be enough just to change your energy, right? So it's not always that we can accomplish it within the moment or within that time, like, Often the things that I that I do, I don't do them at nine in the morning when I'm sitting with my cards all the time. I mean, I get to them until five or six at night. But once I've set a plan in motion, my whole self and my energy starts to shift and it allows me to show up much more fully. All right, makes sense, people with me? We're gonna go through some examples. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? No? All right. So, first card, Ace of Cups, right? We know we're talking about feelings, right? And for me, you know, one of the things that I see in this is obviously the, there's the sacrament here, right? We see the Holy Spirit and the communion wafer and the glass of wine, the way in which that flows. And for me, uh, you know, although I'm not Christian, um, this directs me towards my spiritual practice, right? Self-care equals spending time with my Arishas, discussing what's going on, talking to them, praying, sitting in their energy, maybe taking a spiritual bath and using those things to move into being more fully present, right? And again, most of the time, if I'm gonna do something like a bath or if I'm, you know, I'm gonna talk with them, I'm going to talk with them in the morning and I'm going to do something later in the day, right? Because often I have places to be and people to see and all that kind of stuff, right? And when I'm looking at these cards here, especially if we're going to use the second card, I'm looking for simple pointed answer and I'm stopping there, right? Whereas I might spend a lot of time inquiring of the first card. By the time I get to this card, I want to be able to say it in a sentence, right? Because if it's a 10 part prescription, you might be thinking too much. You might be all up in your head. You might be, you know, whatever it's possible, but really what we're looking for is something simple, something that hopefully you can get to in a short order of time and something that you can just say in a snappy way. Right. And believe me, I understand you may spend a bunch of time. And sometimes I spend a bunch of time, even with, you know, many years of experience getting around to the snappy answer, right? Like, oh, well, yeah, it's spirits and community and connection. Okay, I love the officials, da, da, da. And, you know, and then I'm like, oh, I should just sit and pray. That's what I should do. Sit and pray. I'll talk to them, right? Um, and off we go, right? Um, there's nothing wrong 
with that process, but try and get to that short answer. And once you get to that short answer, leave it there and try and move forward, okay? Queen of Wands, right? For me, um, Queen of Wands is this strong, fiery energy, right? Of people who don't put up with crap from anybody, right? Sometimes, you know, we all put up with our own crap, right? Or I know I do. Maybe everybody else does, right? My own crap gets in the way, my own way of thinking, my own... Um, you know, not centering myself enough, right? And so there's, for me, uh, a short list of people who are the queen of wands in my life. That is who I can have a conversation with and who I can probably probably get on the phone relatively quickly, you know, in a day or in a couple of days and have a conversation about what am I, what am I doing that's allowing other people to interfere with my energy, right? Get that advice. Right now, you might have a different interpretation, right? Or you might have a black cat and be like, "Oh yeah, you know what I need to do? I need to sit down with my cat, just pet my cat for a while, enjoy that connection, and so on." Right? You might have some relationship to sunflowers or other things. This card might look like your mom or your sibling or your partner, whichever. Those are all wonderful answers too, right? It's not about getting the same answer as everybody else. It's about seeing what you see in the card, right? Or if you, if you prefer knowing what you know about the card. But I would prefer in general with these things, especially when we're reading for ourselves, that it be something we see more so than a bunch of knowledge that we pull up because that knowledge can often be misleading, right? Strength card. You know, a strength card for me represents those um, those moments of something physical that consume all of our attention, right? Those moments where we lose ourselves in something. And so here, right, I see this as the, the person petting the lion or the animal, right? And being caught up in that experience, right? It reminds me of my eldest who... Uh, we will go on walks and, you know, when we go on certain walks, they'll be like, all right, can I say hello to dogs today? And we're like, yes. And we will stop every dog, ask the person if we can pet it. And they will just stop and have this fully present moment with every dog along the way. And it just fills them up so much, right? Um, your physical thing might be walking, running, climbing, right? It might be... Uh, any other sort of physical things that bring that up for you, right? For me personally, if it's gonna be something that I'm gonna do, that's gonna draw me into the moment, there are a few things better than climbing and cycling for me. Um, and I'm super fortunate to have a, a climbing wall at the studio here, um, which I put in during COVID and I will just come here and goof around and so on. And there's nothing like, you know, all of a sudden you're up off the ground trying to do a thing everything else fades away, right? And the, that physical activity moves the, the stress and the other things out of the way. And it also aids sleep and so on and so on, right? Um, but you might choose a different path with this, right? You might choose to go see your, uh, you know, your neighbor's dog. You might see a particular person in the card who you recognize and so on and so on, right? Six of coins, you know, when I see this card, when I saw this card recently, uh, it reminded me to be charitable, right? And so I made a point of going places I know where people hang out asking for money and other things. I made sure I had money in my pockets. I, I think it was the same day I went in, so I was going in somewhere and the person asked me for money and I didn't have money. I'm like, I don't have cash, but I'm gonna go shopping in here can I get you something? And they're like, oh, I would love whatever it was. And I got them a little gift card for Dollarama as well, which is where I was, right? I'm just like, you know, and sometimes that putting other people first can be super helpful, right? We might also find ourselves on the other side of that equation, right? I need to ask for what I actually need, right? Who's got what I need that I can hit them up for it, right? 
Do I need to borrow some money from somebody? Do I need someone to cook me a meal? Do I need some charity? Do I need to whatever, right? Wherever we're at, we'll see those things, right? And then of course, we wanna try and put them together if we're gonna read with uh, multiple cards, right? Um, so we're gonna go over, over time here. I, I uh, should always know better. I never know how to stay in enough time. I always want to talk about more things than I have time for. So hopefully people can hang out. If you cannot hang out, um, the recording will be out sometime tomorrow so you can catch the rest of it then. Um, so how do I show up fully for today? All right. Huh. Look at that tower. Total disruption. Unexpected disruption. All right. Things that are shocking. All right. Um, how do I show up for today? Well, I be ready for the unexpected, all right? Today, I know that things will not go as plans and things will be disrupted and I need to be prepared for that, all right? It's the best we can do with the tower, all right? Um, I'm gonna ask this question, right? Like, so that's the, the notion, right? The disruption, but what else, right? What other self-care is there available in this? Right. And I drew for this, and I drew all of these uh, as examples together for people or for myself over the last little while. We have the Five of Swords, not a particularly nice, gen like generally card that I'm happy to see. Right. Um, but the Five of Swords to me says you've got to really focus on what you can take care of and not focus on what is lost or wasted. Right? For me, it's a practical card that says, um, don't, don't, don't uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Look for what is valuable and what remains, right? And we might see different things, right? We might say, you know, let other people have their feelings, right? We might look at those two figures in the background and say, those people are all caught up in their emotions about stuff. Um, and look, they're, they're not focused on what needs to be done. I need to not get caught up in their feelings so that I can focus on what I need to do, all right? We might also say, you know, look, people are gonna make a mess and we're gonna have to clean up. And well, that's just the nature of it, all right? Tower, something is disruptive, something's broken, there's a mess afterwards. Five of Swords, we could see this person as collecting the mess that other people have made, all right? Certainly as a parent, I resonate with that idea, okay? And you can see how I'm trying to draw some correlation between those two cards. Sometimes it might feel like a very thin line. Sometimes it might feel um, deeper and more solid, right? But I'm always trying to kind of draw those connections back. All right, make sense? Yeah, okay. Page of coins, right? What do I, how can I show up fully today? I can honor, pay attention, respect what is valuable and significant in my life, right? To me, uh, there's almost, a, there's a reverence in this image that I'm seeing. There's almost an adoration, right? For that coin that they're holding on to, right? There's something very emotional about it. And so I noticed that it's about, for me, I'm gonna say that maybe it's about attitude, right? And I was showing up and respecting those things that I'm looking at. Now, how do I, how do, I do that, right? Well, I feel, I notice that, uh, I feel like it's the same character, even though they look different, is up there blowing the horn, right? So how do I show up fully today? I need to make sure I tell everybody how great this thing is, right? In this particular example, um, I felt like it was, a, it was a personal thing for me. I felt like it was something particular to my work life that I need to make sure that I got out there and let everybody know how great it was. And I noticed immediately the, dis the dissonance between my reverence for this thing that I was offering and my reticence 
around going out and tooting my own horn about it, all right? And so then I pulled out my inquiry and kind of dug into what that, why was I slow to promote it if I was so invested in it, if I thought it was so wonderful, all right? So we wanna kind of like watch, especially when we're going to get those two cards, right? If there's something that feels great in the first one and feels hard in the second one, then we're gonna to wanna to pull that inquiry out and, and examine those feelings, right? Why, what's going on? What am I feeling about that now? How did my emotion change once I saw that second card? And I really encourage people to write these things down because it's so slippery to think things in our head and assume that we're gonna remember them and assume that we're gonna be able to pull them back or that there's a clear continuity and so on. But the reality is, and I say this um, from a lot of personal experience and from so much experience, watching people drop these little pieces out as they're telling the story themselves and not noticing that it stopped making sense at some point. We need a record so we can review it. And I will both review it the next day or later that day often, but also I'll review it as I'm going through the process, right? Because sometimes I'll have written something really smart and I forgot it. I ignored it. I didn't go with it. And then when I go back the second time and review it, then I see it, right? Sometimes I miss the obvious. I'm like, oh, why did I miss that? Look, at there's a whole thing there, right? Um, having that, that concrete thing, and it doesn't need to be an, an essay, right? Um, will really help us go back. And also if we lose the thread, it will remind us, right? So that was this reading. Ten of Wands, story of my life over the last month. Too much to do all the time, right? And for me, the Ten of Wands is a card of uh, working harder, not always smarter, right? Ten of Wands is a card of uh, pride, stubbornness that cause problems, right? Um, not thinking through the problem, just trying to, to muscle through and get things done, right? And it's, you know, it may, it may be that all 10 of those wands need to get somewhere, but it may not be that carrying them all at once makes the most sense, right? So, you know, this feeling of burden is the central issue and addressing my actions in relationship to that feeling of burden and looking for a way in which I can uh, ease that, right? Which I'm going to look for in Oh, there's no second card. <laughs> well, there you go. Sorry, I screwed up the slides. Um, second card uh, in this case was uh, the star card, right? Star card, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, as the card here, um, star card is the, the opposite of this in some way, right? We see the person is generally kind of relaxed. There's a flow, right? If we think about the meaning, the star card is about being kind of in alignment with our star or our destiny or other things. It's about being in the right place at the right time. And so um, 10 of wands to the star card, you know, the thing is to A, look for the flow, right? To two, look for the easy way to accomplish the same thing, right? And three, to maybe have a sense of, I'm, I'm always a little like, eh, about this whole sort of um, gratitude piece, right? Like gratitude is wonderful, but it's not always applicable, right? But especially in context to this, being busy during a pandemic, I am grateful for that, right? And so I noticed this, this way in which being frustrated about the work interfered with the gratitude for having the work, and it reminded me to go back and look at it, right? So you see how we're kind of like, look at those cards and try and draw them together, right? Is that making sense to everybody? Yeah. Anybody have any questions? So did anybody draw any cards as they were going along? Did anybody have anything that they wanted to share that they saw in their own cards or about my examples and stuff today? Um, now, of course, nobody has to, right? But if you do, feel free to unmute yourself and jump in. No? Okay. 
That's cool. All right. Well, that brings us to the end, right? So number one, I really do want to thank everybody for, uh, for showing up for this. Certainly all the people who catch it uh, on the flip sides. Uh, also, you know, I'm deeply grateful for that. And I am tremendously grateful for all the fine humans who hang out in my various orbits and, you know, support me in all the different things that I do and put out there. I really super dig it. Um, and I really am deeply grateful for all the all of you. Um, I always ask when I get to the end of a, a piece of teaching um, for people to give credit if you're sharing this you know, work, if you're doing this with other people or talking about it in other places and so on. You know, I've had the pleasure and privilege to learn all sorts of techniques from all sorts of teachers along the way. And I always do my best to say, oh, I learned this, this reading technique from Joanna Powell Colbert. When I was hanging out with, you know, James Wanless, he taught me this thing and so on and so on, right? I think it's important, especially in, in this day and age, to sort of share the lineage of things uh, because I feel like a lot of that connection just kind of gets um, washed away, right? Uh, number two, this, uh, the direct link for downloading this will just appear in the free section of my website sometime tomorrow. If you want to snag it for yourself and review it, if you're, you know, if you know people who would like it, you can just point them directly to it and, um, you know, they can get it and it will just stay up there until some point of the internet storage makes, doesn't make sense for it anymore. Um, I run monthly classes. If you like this and you would like more of it, um, they're on the events page of my website. Uh, I've been running a tarot class every month for most of the last year. And a lot of that stuff is going to um, also be set up for pre-recorded classes for purchase as well. Um, I offer reading and mentorship if anybody's interested. And, uh, you know, my shops tell us tons of stuff um, at thehermitslife.com. I always appreciate any support with that as well. Thanks so much. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording.